Hey folks, Tony here, and I wanted to show you how to build data tables using Hotware in Tubo Laravel. What we have here is actually a list of servers similar to what Forge does. Actually, the styles I copied from Forge, so there's that. And yeah, we have a list of servers over here. I can change the type of ownership and I can apply. I can also change the type of grid grid list so I can do a list or a grid and this is all being sent over as a form submit. This is not using anything yet, no Alpine, although we are using Jetstream, no Turbo or anything. The first thing we are doing is installing Turbo Laravel. So I'm going to copy over here the command to require it and I'm going to run it over here. So that should be all for the backend. For the front end, I'm using import map so I can use import map pin and I can say hotwire the turbo and we're also going to use hotwire the stimulus. So let's require that already. Okay, so both are required. Let's set it up. So in our resources, JS, we have a libs folder over here and an index file. In this index file, I'm going to import Turbo from Libs Turbo, and I'm also going to import Stimulus from Libs Stimulus. We are not going to make use of this export yet, but down the road, it could be able to do like this import turbo from libs and that would work. So yeah, let's create those files. So we're going to create over here a turbo.js. So we are going to import everything as turbo from hotwire turbo, and we are going to export that. And, and that should be it for turbo really. So let's go to the stimulus one. So we are going to import the application from Hotwire D stimulus. And we are going to assign that stimulus to the window, but running the start command. And yeah, we're going to export default stimulus just in case somebody uses it. Okay, but there are no controllers registered yet. So let's create one. I'm gonna create a hello controller. A JS and controller from hotwire the stimulus. And I'm gonna export default class extends controller. And I'm gonna add a connect method over here. Console log connected. This controller is not yet registered in our stimulus application, which was started over here. We have to start it with, we have to register it. So to do that, I'm gonna create an index.js over here and I'm gonna import the hello controller. Controllers, hello controller. And I'm gonna create an initialize function over here, which is going to receive stimulus. And then we can register the hello controller on this stimulus instance. And then I'm gonna export the function as the default export in this module. Now I'm gonna go back to the stimulus setup function and I'm gonna import the initializer from controllers. And I'm gonna call it over here after we run application start and I'm gonna pass stimulus to it. And this should register our controllers. So this should be the single place where we register controllers in our application. So let's see if that that's actually working. If we go to the index.blade servers over here. So this entire view, the server's index, let me go to the routes file actually. So if we go to web, we only have a resource routes over here for servers and that goes to the servers controller. In there, we only have a single action, which is the index that returns a view. Pretty common, a lot of our stuff. So we are getting the current team for the authenticated user and then we are fetching the service assigned to that team. If there is a search term, we apply this filter like this. If there is a ownership term, we will apply it as well. 
and then we paginate, we sort them by latest and we paginate by 16. Okay, so that's pretty basic lot of our stuff, right? There's nothing fancy here. So now let's see the servers index page is a regular blade view and over and over here in the header section of the layout where we see the servers title and the filters and the create server link. That's a form, entirely a form. And that form uses the get method. So everything will be sent as query strings. And everything goes to the servers index, okay? There's nothing really complicated over here. We have a select field for the ownership. So you, if you select over here, if you change it like this and apply, that's just a select field. That's nothing fancy. The grid view over here is made of radio but So once you change it over here, you have to press apply. And that's fine. I mean, we can improve that, right? But let's see if we, if our stimulus setup is working. We are going to register a controller over here and that controller will be called hello. So I'm gonna open the console and we should see a connected, which we do. So everything seems to be working. And yeah, now actually I, I'm gonna rename this controller. We're going to create a controller so this form auto submits every time something changes. So we are going to call it auto submit controller. And over here we have to change this to auto submit controller. And then we are going to call it auto submit and this goes to the auto submit controller. So if we go back to the, we should be able to change it over here to auto submit like this and refresh the page and we see nothing. Auto submit over here, index control. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I did. Okay. So if we refresh now, we should see the connected as we were seeing before and that's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to close this and we are going to progressively enhance. So the first thing that I'm going to do is hide this function, this, this button over here, because I don't want that to be visible. So what I can do is I can wrap the button. Let me find it over here. I can wrap this button in a no script tag. And that means the button will not be visible if the user has JavaScript enabled. Otherwise it will be hidden. So in our case, we have an, we have it enabled, so it's hidden for us. So if we change it over here and, you know, submit the form by pressing enter or something. So yeah, let's make it so that every time something changes in a form, an input is changed, we submit the form. So what we can do here is we can go to the auto submit controller and rename this action to submit and then we are going to get the element because this auto submit controller is going to be connected to our form itself. So we can do request submit over here and the form will auto submit, but this is not actually hooked to anything. So we are going to hook it. If we go back here and we say data action input auto submit, and then we are going to call the submit function. So let's refresh and let's change it here and everything should be auto submitting. So that's cool. Um, however, if we are not careful, we are going to be sending a lot of requests to the server because we have a search field over there. So if we go back here and I type hello, you can see that a bunch of requests were made to the server and that's not cool. Let's debounce it. So to debounce it, I'm going to pin a uh, debounce import map pin debounce, which is a function. And then I'm going to the auto submit controller. I'm going to import it over here, import debounce from debounce. And I'm going to use the initialize, initialize method over here. 
and I'm going to change the function, the submit function. I'm going to make it, I'm going to turn it in, into a debounce function. And to do that, we do it like this. Okay, if everything was correct, we should be able to press backspace a couple times and only one request was made, which is good. We should be able to type and finish the typing and only one request is going to be sent to the server. So that's cool. However, we are still, let's go back here and let's change it over here. So if you can see it, we, we are losing focus of this field that we are typing, that we are using every time this form submits, right? And that's not ideal because that kind of interrupts the user. So if you type in the form submits, then it loses focus. Well, now we have to focus on the input again, and that's not ideal. So the way we're going to do is we are going to wrap the entire form list in a tuple frame, and then we are going to hook the form to that tuple frame specifically. So everything outside the tuple frame is going to be kept alive in the page and only the frame will reload. And to do that, we are going to do, to wrap it, as I said, the list of servers, which is right here. We are going to wrap it in a tuple frame. We are going to give it an ID of servers list, and we are going to close it like this. Okay, so now we need to point this form to that frame. And the way we do that is by using the tuple, data tuple frame, and then we say the ID of the tuple frame. So if everything is correct, we should be able to clear it here. The list reloads and the forms is still active. So we are still in focus. So that's good. And yeah, what else? What else can we do over here? So as you can see, we actually lost something in the process. So if we type totem over here, the list updates, but the, the URL doesn't change, right? Our query strings are gone now because those were sent to the frame itself. So in the frame over here, we have the URL, but you can actually tell Tubo to advance the history whenever a form is submitted. So this one, this form is pointing to that frame, but we can say data Tubo action advance. And if we refresh now and we search for totem, we can see that the query strings are there. So if we change it over here, everything should be working fine. Okay, so that's cool. But if we click on a, there's a still a, an issue over here. So if we click on here, you can see that the page is not actually sent to the query string because the frame is hijacking there. So what we want is every time we click on a pagination link, we update the page with the query strings with the page, right? So there are a couple ways we can do that. First one, the easiest one is to make this tubo frame target the top, which means like the whole document, so the whole body. So every time we click on a link over here, we should be able to, um, let me actually refresh. So if we click on page two, we see that it actually changed because the frame is not trapping links anymore, everything goes to the to a tubo visit. So if we change over here the ownership type and stuff, everything should be fine. So if we type here and use the, the pagination, you can see that ownership is empty and view is empty, but search has an A on it. So if we type here, we should see the, the pagination working. So that's cool. And the filter is kept. So that's awesome. Um, let me close this and yeah. So yeah, every time you can even toggle the grid list, the grid view to a list view and everything should be working. Not sure about you, but I think this is pretty cool. The way tubal frames work, like you can trigger a tubal frame, reload from outside a tubal frame and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. I think we can do a lot of stuff with it. And yeah, so that's it. That's what I had to show you today. That's how you can progressively enhance your application to make it more enjoyable to your users. And you know, there's nothing fancy in this. We only got like, we only wrote like 12 lines of actual JavaScript code to make something very generic. We can reuse the same 
auto submit controller over here in other places. So yeah, that's what I wanted to share. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.